Uh, we have Aiden with us. Aiden, many of you who are new uh, may not know who he is because he was in the Philippines for the last year. And uh, before that, he had a couple years at uh, Bible College. And so he's back as of last weekend. And we get to hear from him. So he's got a bunch of slides. He's going to share about his time in the Philippines. And um, he'll take 15, 20 minutes or so. And then we'll dismiss the kids for uh, children's ministry and uh, get into the word here. So you want to use this one or this one? This one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You know, the missionaries, as they go out, people that uh, go to other places and serve, that's not easy, you know, because you're out of your context, you're out of your uh, context of country, language, the things you know, and uh, I, give it to, I give a hand to these guys. So, and they need, they need our prayers, continual support and love when they go out and come back. You know, so go ahead, Aiden. All right. So, as Cameron was saying, there's a lot of people here that might not know me. I noticed that when I came back, I got back last week, but I drove here straight from the airport. Is that there's so many people here that I've never met, but I've been here for I think 17 years or so. Um, but I keep on leaving, so that's why that's why you guys don't know me. Um, but just to introduce myself, um, well, I've been a part of this church for a long time, in, in my lifetime. Um, but I left almost three years ago to go down to California. There's a, a Bible college called Calvary Bible Institute down there. They're, they're all over the world, but California has the main campus, um, and that's where I went. And down there, it's a Bible college that takes you through the entire Bible in one year. So you go to, like, there's the main Calvary Chapel Bible College, which is in Marietta, not anymore, but the main Calvary Chapel Bible College. They do the whole thing in four years. So I went to a school where they condensed that to one year. And then they kick you out. But the whole point is to teach you everything you need to know in a short amount of time so that you can be tossed into the ministry wherever God is calling you. Uh, so I went to that Bible college for a year, came back for maybe a couple months, and then I went back down to California to work. And I was working down there maybe six months, and the, the pastor came up to me just Sunday morning. He's like, I need you in the Philippines. It's like, okay, I'll go. <laughs> so that's where I've been. I came back for, I think, one or two weeks in between, but then I was gone, and that's where I've been the last year. So I've been back and forth for almost three years now, which is why many of you might not know me. You might have heard me um, over just Cameron doing announcements or the email. I'm often in those. Um, and a lot of you gave me a ton of support, which was absolutely necessary because... Bible college students are broke. <laughs> and that's where I came from, was Bible college. So the only way I could do this was with you guys donating and making it possible for me to do this. Uh, so that's why I put this together. I'd like you guys to know where your money went, that I didn't just run off with your money. <laughs> it went places. So here we go. I was in Tagaytay City. Oh, it's over there. This was day one. These are the people that I met. The one right next to me in the middle and the one on the far left were the two that I worked with the most. Um, the one guy there ended up leaving a couple weeks in. He wasn't really part of it. Uh, but those two are the main people I was with. Um, and this day one, I'll show you something later, but they gave me a great introduction to the Philippines on day one. This was my workstation, bottom right. I run the tech for just the classes throughout the week. That was the first class with the pastor from California that sent me there. He came down to launch the Bible college. I went down for the first year. That's what I was doing, was getting this Bible college up and running. Um, and then I, I left them with it. <laughs> but that's where I worked. A little hole right in the corner. It works that way too. So this was an introduction that the church gave me. 
Uh, they call it brutal fight. So what they do is they get banana leaves, they allow all the food there, and you eat with your hands. We did this once, and I'm glad we only did this once. Because I don't like people touching my food. This was scary for me. But you take the rice and you grab like a ball of rice and then you mash it in the other food to pick it up. And then, then you eat that ball of rice. But there's no rules. So that's how they just gave an introduction to being in the Philippines. That way. Okay, this is the first thing we did. Probably like halfway through January, a couple weeks in, we did a free dental day. We had a team come from the States. They brought just a bunch of their equipment and anyone could get free dental. This means something a little different than you might think. If you had a problem with your tooth, they would just take it out. That's what they could do for you. So that's what we offered. But we gave packages out. We had Bibles to give out. And there's like a toothbrush, toothpaste, stuff like that. And it was just a way to get people to know what our church was, who we were, um, and to help them out a little bit. Oh, I missed it. Mandoro Outreach. This was close to the beginning of the year, probably February or so. And this was, this was huge. This was like, if you think missionary work, this is what we were doing. So we were doing an outreach to the Mungian tribe. And the Mungian tribe is a tribe in the Philippines that is like, so here you think of like the First Nations groups, and then you have the First Nations groups that are kind of like uncontacted from the rest of the people. They prefer to stick to themselves. This was the Mungian tribe in the Philippines. They've been there. People leave them alone. They don't want to be bothered by the other people, so they stick to what they know. Uh, so when we were there, there were like shamans. They were eating these berries that they thought were for healing, but they were hallucinogenics. Uh, and we went to go do an outreach for them. A couple years before we were there, a church from Korea came down. They built them this building that they wanted for a church. And then they left. They didn't set up a church. They didn't set up teaching. Nothing. They just built them a building. So we, when we went down, we noticed they didn't have even a bathroom to that building. So we went and added a bathroom, as well as doing outreaches, introducing them to the gospel. Um, and we set up a guy there who will continue on the teaching to try to help them. So we went. This is the bathroom you're building, the middle picture. That's what we had before. That's what we found there. That's the bathroom that they made for them, bottom right. So you're kind of on like a pedestal <laughs> with a toilet. So we built them walls so that they could use the bathroom in peace. <laughs> Top left, the women that went with us uh, didn't do the construction work. They just ministered to the people, especially the women there, um, because they just... In their culture, they just had children over and over and over. The men didn't stay with them. They just left them. So they were stuck with all these children. So they needed a lot of ministering and encouragement. So that's what our women were doing, was just sharing the gospel with them. Sharing that they were loved, unlike the men that just abandoned them afterward. This was our sleeping arrangements, top left. This is inside the building that they gave us more building the bathroom and then the bottom left I don't know if you can see that but there's little dots in that blanket that's my blanket halfway through the second night there were hundreds of ants just crawling all over us in our clothes in our blankets and this was a huge building probably about this size there and we were in like a corner so we moved everything to the other side of the room and we slept there woke up again in the middle of the night and they had moved to us <laughs> So we ended up getting in the truck that we had and leaving, and we slept on the beach to avoid the ants. <laughs> so this is the truck. I, I don't have any better photos, but there's a story behind this truck. Is the guy who we met down there said, oh, I got a vehicle for you guys to use, because the Munyan tribe was up in the jungle, up a mountain, like on this barely you could call it a road and he's like oh I got something for you it's uh, like a forerunner but the Filipino forerunner I don't know what it was called but first gear didn't work four wheel drive didn't work uh, there was a problem with a belt in there that I couldn't seem to get to the dash didn't work anything so he said if you can fix it you can drive it 
I could not fix it because this is like order in parts kind of thing. But he was like, you can still drive it. And we needed a vehicle. So he said, you're the driver. And this was his favorite vehicle. So no one else was allowed to drive it. So I was kind of stuck. <laughs> the best part about this is this is a manual. I never driven manual before. <laughs> And I didn't, I didn't tell the guy because he's like, I only want you driving this. So I was like, okay. So I drove this car. I learned manual driving up this barely a road up a mountain in the jungle. And it went well. Didn't stall out once. So after doing all this work, uh, me and I had an American student there. It was wonderful because he spoke English. It was like the only thing that kept me alive this year was the one guy that spoke English. And we decided to take everybody out on these boats. So we went on this tour, boat bottom left, and they just drive you around. They take you to these tiny little islands. They take you to some coral reefs. You go to swim with some turtles. And they take you in this underground like tunnel that's filled with water. You swim through it. Don't have a picture. I don't have many photos from this, but it was an awesome trip. Uh, but water and phones don't go too well. But in this tunnel, we were swimming in, and we saw there was this snake kind of like off to the side, and we're like, oh, don't worry about it. We won't go near it. Then the guy looped us back around, and we went right by the snake. And the women were freaking out, and we're like, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's probably not even poisonous. So the guy started splashing water on it, and it swam right through our group. Afterward, we were talking with the guy who's like main on that island. He's like, oh, yeah. That's a banded coral reef or something. I forget. Like most poisonous snake in the water over there. So it will kill you like within a couple minutes. <laughs> Swam right through our group. This is an outreach we started. Um, they actually spoke really good English, the children there. Our church was English, so they picked up on it really easily. But they needed a little bit of help. So on the weekends, we would teach them English. So that's the American that was with me, top left. I'm top right. That's his wife in the middle. And that's what we do. That was our ministry as the native English speakers. We teach them English. I found it Tim Hortons. <laughs> Yeah, this was my favorite place. I would go to this Tim Hortons all the time when I just needed some Canada. I dragged a student with me, Filipino student. I introduced him to Tim Hortons. He loved it despite his face. He looks like he hates it, but we went back all the time. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Whosoever's, but they're a group based in California. And they do outreaches all over the states mainly. But they do jump around to different countries. Um, and their whole thing is high school students. They want to reach high school students. The, all the guys that are part of the Whosoever's went through like drugs, alcohol, depression, suicidal thoughts, stuff like that. And they know that most of the high schoolers are going through this, whether they tell you or not. So they want to reach those kids, give them the gospel um, b before they turn to other things like they did. So they came out to the Philippines, and I already knew them from California. I, I met them there at a conference, um, and we did this outreach. And the thing is, about the schools there, it's a lot more open than they are here. You go try to tell a principal, hey, can we give the gospel in your school? He's like, no, no, you won't. There, they're like, oh yeah, because they understand like the kids need help. They're like, you guys can give them help. And, and they're okay with that. Here, not so much. But we even, top left, the writing's really small, but the guy at the end of the table is the mayor of the town. We met with the mayor, and he gave us free reign to all of the schools, the public schools there. And he said, we can do whatever we want. So that opened us up to all these schools. So the other three photos are us talking to all the students, um, giving the gospel, giving testimonies. And then there's our big outreach is we got them all into a courtyard. We did this in five or six different schools where we got the entire school to get into a courtyard or a gym and they do a huge presentation, performance, because they, they had a professional skateboarder there, get the kids excited and give the gospel. That's more talking to the students. 
the far right, those are all students there that are accepting Jesus right on the spot before we did any of the presentations or anything. This was just us saying, hey, we're here to do this. And they're like, okay, I want to give my life to Christ right now. Um, so that's the, the right side. That's talking to those same students. And bottom left, when those students came up, and then more talking in the classrooms. That's the presentation that they did with the skateboarding. And then these were some of the results we had. They would message us, um, mostly the team. Some of us got personal messages of just how much they needed to have the gospel given to them, have some hope in their lives. A couple of them were like considering suicide. One person said that he was planning on going home that night to commit suicide when we came in. And he said not to go through with it. Monkeys. So I really wanted to see a monkey the whole time. This was at almost the end of the year. And I, I was like, we lived in the jungle. And I was like, where are the monkeys? And they're like, oh yeah, they're everywhere. I'm like, what do you mean they're everywhere? See, they're, just, they're terrified of humans. They won't come anywhere near humans. But I found a monkey. How, how can we play this video? Can, can you play that video? Oh man, I want to show you guys the monkeys. There we go. That's my friend, not a monkey. On the power line right there. So finally saw a monkey. <laughs> a couple other videos, but they wouldn't go onto the PowerPoint for me. Oh, it's going again. Okay, my motorcycle. This was another huge thing. Driving manual and then motorcycles were the two things I've always wanted to do. Never got a chance. I got to do it in the Philippines. So I bought this motorcycle. Uh, I'm actually not sure, but somebody donated just a chunk of money and said, get yourself a motorcycle. I don't know who did it, but uh, I owe them one. So there's me on my motorcycle. Cows are always just on the road. You have to not run into them. <laughs> That was my motorcycle later. So this is what happens with um, low-end motorcycles there. Got it from China, I think. Um, the wires there are my motor mounts now. So I strapped up the motor with some fencing wire or something. I had to gut the whole thing out to try to fix a problem I had. But it works. <laughs> Then we have the multi-cab. This was a gift from somebody to our church, sort of. It was an offer, and there's always a saying, you get what you pay for. This was free, so we got what we paid for. That's the multi-cab. Far right is me working on the engine, which happened to be under my feet in the back of the multi-cab. We were driving right now, and I was working on the engine as we were driving. And then a couple days later, the engine finally gave up. So on the left is me in the multi-cab on a tow truck. <laughs> but I actually, uh, I'll get to it later, but I, I taught the midweek and it was online. Okay, sure. So I did the midweek in the multi-cab on the back of the tow truck. And then here's the teaching opportunities I got. So the left side is me doing the midweek. So the pastor ran the midweek as well as the Sunday, but he decided that he needed a little bit more time to focus on like his family, other things that needed to be done. So he gave me the midweek. Um, so I think they're all still on Facebook. You can find them. And then the middle is our secondary church in a town probably an hour and a half away. They don't speak English, so I'm speaking with an interpreter here. Um, and got to do that a couple different times. And it was a great opportunity. And then the right side was actually during my semester break. I went with the student in the middle. We went to his hometown and I stayed with his parents. And his dad is a pastor who is always doing ministry every single day. So he brought me doing the different ministries and it was great. So I got to teach at his church too. And this was during my semester break as well fixing his motorcycle 
And I found this hilarious because this would not get past work safe ever. He has a pair of sunglasses and he's in sandals and shorts and a t-shirt welding. <laughs> but it worked for him. And then it worked. So that's us driving away. Oh, so that is supposed to be before these. I screwed up. But this is also on that semester break. There's a different teaching opportunities I got to do. He was friends with a principal in one of the schools there. So he just said, hey, I have an idea. Let's just go talk to some students. So we walked up to the school. We went to the principal and we're like, hey, can we talk to some students? And they just derailed all the classes. We just walked into the classes and we gave them the gospel, some testimonies and stuff. So it's so different than here. But we just used that. I wish our schools were like that. We could just walk in and be like, hey, just no classes today. We're going to give the gospel. So that's what, that's what we got to do. So there's a bunch of different classes we went to. And then another church I got to teach at. This happened during swimming. We went to the river on one of our days that we weren't doing a ministry. And one of the kids there who had been traveling with us doing ministries was like, hey, can I get baptized? Just at the river there. So we baptized them. Because why not? So that, that was great. It was really out of the blue. Um, but I, I got a chance to baptize somebody in the Philippines. That's us driving around his town. As you can see, it's a little bit different than our towns here. But it is lots of fun. There's no road laws. This is another one of our ministry vehicles. It's a tricycle. It's a motorcycle with a sidecar. We got some here, but not, not like these things. These things are super popular. Everybody's got one. It's so much fun. I have a fun story about this tricycle at the beginning of the year. So I usually go in that side cart there where that kid is sitting top left. It's open to the road a little bit. So we were driving through the jungle and there's a huge snake across the road, right in the middle. So the driver's like, oh, I'll, I'll try to go around him. Just try not to bug the snake. Um, we bugged the snake. So we went around him and it jumped at me in the tricycle, but I had a guy sitting next to me. He just put his foot out and then we told the driver to just go. Um, but it was a viper. So that was fun. <laughs> Here is the public transportation. You either love it or you hate it. I loved it. The American friend I had hated it. But um, so these were military vehicles that we had there in the Philippines, World War II. Then the Americans left and they took them and made them into public transportation. So you fill the inside and then you go into the back if the inside's full. If the back's full, you go on top. <laughs> but it was 12 pesos for a ride, which is like 20 something cents. So it was great. Get as far as you want for 20 cents. Here's my dog. I don't like dogs. And I never thought I'd have a dog. But this dog was actually great. It was not, not like the dogs we have here. <laughs> so that's my dog. And then it's puppies. So we had a huge problem with strays everywhere. There were dozens of dogs on our road. We had the only female dog. Uh, and the owner of our dog didn't ever want to get it spayed. So we ended up with puppies more times than one. Um, and we had to find places for it to go. So the American couple took those two. And my cats. So I love cats. I don't like dogs, but I love cats. So I have two cats. The orange top left is one that I stole off the road because like the dogs, there are plenty of strays, so I took one. I took that home with me until about a week later it ran away. So then the white one actually followed me home from the gym, which is like a half hour walk. It just followed me home. So I kept it um, until they made me get rid of it because the owner of the house didn't like cats. But I got a cat for a while and then I got another cat for a while. That was nice. And then there's frogs. So we have big frogs and little frogs everywhere. And you're actually not supposed to touch them. The small one's fine, but the big ones are poisonous. Um, but they're everywhere. 
they're probably about the size of your foot. They're massive. So they make frog wallets out of them. <laughs> I brought a couple home. There's a ton of different designs, shapes, whatever, sizes. But they're great. Here's an uh, opportunity that I had. I got bored one day and I wanted to hike. And there are no hikes in the Philippines. They don't do hikes. I don't know why. But I found one hike that on my Google Maps said half hour. So I had to teach that Sunday. So I brought all of my study material. I got like a Bible, like a big Bible for all my notes. I had it through Bible college, got everything. So that's what I study with. But it's heavy. And I took three of my notebooks with my notes with me. And I took my laptop. So heavy backpack of stuff. Because I was like half hour, whatever. It was not half an hour. This was the hike I did. So you're hiking up that little path in the middle there, across this ridge line. Bottom left, you can see that ridge line go all the way across. Top left is the peak. It took about four hours of real hiking, like climbing sometimes with that rope there, with my backpack of study material. So the city market. This one was hard to get over. But fruit and vegetables are everywhere. Anything grows in the Philippines, which is great. And honestly, the fruit there is so different than the fruit here. Like, I don't like mangoes. I would never eat a mango here. Their mangoes, though, are like the best things ever. And all of their fruits are just so many times better and it doesn't make any sense. Unfortunately, that picture at bottom right is really small, but that's the meat just hanging in the open. That's what I had to really get over. Because uh, you walk in, you buy your meat, and they like have to wave the flies off of the meat. You don't know if it's been there for a couple days or not. Um, so that was our market. Coconut trees. This is a video again, if you wouldn't mind playing it. But this is how we got coconuts. They made me do it a couple times. Uh, it's actually kind of fun. So this one I don't make it up to the top because I found out almost at the top that it was infested with like fire ants and they were all over me and biting me so I came back down. But this is how we get coconuts. Against the lake. Yeah, that's where I turned around, so. <laughs> lasso, lasso. I have a bunch of these, too. These are fun. These are also videos. Um, this is the toy that they tried to ban so many times. It's banned in actually a couple countries and a part of the Philippines strictly because they're annoying. So I needed a couple. So this is them, if you wouldn't mind playing the video. There's two videos. So I did a couple outreaches with these things where I bought like 250 of them. We handed them out to the kids and we let them all go at it. So you could imagine just a hundred kids doing that. So that's how they got banned is they'd have like their small communities and all the kids would be using these and the old people would be like, no, you can't have those. Oh, skip that. We don't need that one. It's the same thing. I think we're short on time. Should, should we end it there? Keep on going next week? Yeah. I got a bunch more stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there's a ton more stuff. Yeah, so we'll do a part two next week. Yeah. Let's do that. So we'll do a part two. Yeah. Take that. So that's exciting, you know, to have them come back and share with us. And yeah, I'm looking forward to a part two.